Okay, we're back in. Uh, notice also you can adjust the angle at which this actually um, cuts at, just like the primitive objects that we um, discussed earlier. And also there's subdivision and isoparm subdivision, which actually doesn't seem to affect the object if you actually get isoparms. You can uh, see them if you have a, a smooth um, type of curve or spline. So you can see the differences there. Go back to wireframe there. And then back to linear. So, and there's also movement, in this case, up and down. And you can also scale it. So there's uh, quite a few things you can do off here. And you can always go back to your original curve and just start making changes how, however you would like. Any, uh, any sort of change you want. Now, uh, I'm going to get rid of that. Now I want to talk about the next, the next nerve object, the loft nerve. If we go on the front, top, yeah, top view, excuse me, middle click, go on the top view. And get a linear spot here. And we're, we're going to just, uh, I'm just going to click a few times. Bunch of, bunch of different points, uh, okay, eight points there. And uh, create another spline here. What what uh what the loft nerve does is generally make a plane based off uh, splines. And it doesn't really matter the point. So notice this has five points. And notice we've also been going from bottom to top. Notice that this is white and this is blue. This is blue indicating that this is the last point. So if we go from top to bottom, let's say we actually uh, want. Um, I, well, I'll just show you here. Let's bring these in to the loft nerve. Alright, notice it's twisted. It's because this is the last point that we drew, not this up here. So, uh, there's a variety of ways to correct that. Usually, simply enough, though, you can just right click and go to reverse sequence, which will um, bring it back the way it should be. Or, you can just uh, rotate your spline here. So there's a variety of ways of doing it. And uh, let's just rotate these points to give it a little bit more depth here. Or a little more definition, should I say. Oops. <coughs> so that's uh, that's more or less the loft nerve. Uh, very helpful. I've actually used this um, to construct a large portion of my character's head at one point. So very useful. Now, next up, the sweep nerve. As you can probably already tell what this does, fairly simple. Just uh, get a linear spline. You can use whatever um, type of spline you like, I just prefer linear. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and go to the front view. And just draw something. And, of course, we need something for the profile let's go to the in, inside here so we can just drag and drop these inside here and now there's a certain order you get them in so you can actually move the order get something uh, a little odd this is actually the profile now and it's going around this shape here so if you make this smaller it is the profile but usually that's not what you want to do usually um, your small little round object is profile but you can it doesn't even have to be closed you can you can un make this edible you can have it not closed and it, it'll still function ha how you would like it to however you want uh, generally I prefer uh, once again I said a linear spline because we can stick that inside of a hyper nerve and our geometry is uh, evenly spaced for the most part. And we can also adjust again if we would like to. And uh, once again, you have you have several different options. Once again, that uh, probably does a lot more if you're actually using a curved spline. In this case, I'm using linear, so you can rotate it. And you can change the start growth where it actually starts from end growth there should be scale, here's scale yes so you can make it 
hook I suppose, hook I suppose if you wanted to. And just um, a really really helpful tool. I use it on the stems for for most of my objects. And now the Bezier nerves. It's uh, it's more or less a plane. I'm getting back into the right view here. We can uh, select the points on it. Just move them around, and you can adjust how many points are on here. Just the same. So you can have more good points if you'd like. You can uh, change the subdivision if you want. So it more or less allows you to deform a plane before you build it. You can always go to make edible and then actually get the raw geometry if you want to. I don't typically use that most of the time. But it, I suppose it certainly can be useful. Now I think I want to move on to the hypernerve object. There's a, quite a bit to the hypernerve object. I mean, you can take any piece of geometry, just drag and drop it in there, and it, it smooths it. Basically what it does. So if you increase the number of segments here, you can see changes in the viewport there. And, uh, you can also add weights to your objects if you make this edible. You can, and I'll go over these a little bit uh, further later. Actually, let's use edges here. If we want those edges hard, we can drag and drop on the period and make them hard we can, so we can get our edge back, I say. Oops, period. There we go. So hold down on the period button and click and drag. And there's other ways of doing that, which I will get to at some point. That puts a little uh, hypernerve waiting tag on here. You can see that if you uncheck this. Shows up as red. I probably uh, covered that briefly before. But here we go. Oops. Down here in the object. Here, type. So you can change actually how it's smoothing. Just a different algorithm, more or less. Very, you probably won't see too many differences, but uh, you can see a little, quite a few more differences with the. Uh, I mean, usually what I like to use is um, Catmo Clark because you have control over how it subdivides the UVs, which is um, part of texturing, which I'll get into a little bit later. I usually um, end up using Edge seems to work out best, but I'll discuss that more in detail later. But the hypernerve is more or less just an object that allows you to smooth the geometry, whatever that may be. So it's, it's usually what you'd use in characters. Huh, that's interesting. Without using any uh, any fongs. Maybe if we make that edible. Nope, still no fong tags. That's strange. There we go. Now it looks nice and smooth. We go to NA here. There we go. So there's a few nerves objects there, and those can, those can be very useful to just bring up objects real quick, and then you can turn them in, ge into geometry and use them in several different ways. And on a last point, uh, added later, you can also adjust UVs, just how many segments you have throughout this um, throughout the loft nerve. Of course, you probably uh, figured that out by now. Anyway, I just thought I'd let you know. And change how how things are actually bent around. You can have a loop, which I actually loop it around. So if you uh, drag this up, you notice it just completely goes around those splines. So I just thought I'd cover that. Uh, if you didn't look at them, um, it's simple enough, linear. So it just goes straight to each spline. But you've um, probably already played with that enough to where. You've uh, you've probably got it down.